Okay, and just to let you know, we're recording. <laughs> no, I saw. I was giving it five seconds, and then you broke it for me. Oh, so sorry. Okay, in five, on. four, three, two, one. Hi, I'm Eric Pavasic. And I'm Jake Livingood. We're with MIT Career Advising and Professional Development. We're here to help you navigate the uncertainty that comes with your career search. Whether you're a first-year undergrad or a PhD or postdoc, with both of us, we cover the educational gamut of experience. I work with first years. And I work with grad students. And on top of that, we're friends. Ah, uh, go us. And go you for joining us for this episode of Overcoming Uncertainty. Through these episodes, we hope to inform, entertain, and perhaps have a laugh or two along the way. We're coming to you via our homes to bring you career guidance during this remarkable time of uncertainty, a pandemic. This segment has been brought to you by the MIT Alumni Advisors Hub, individual networking where MIT undergrad and grad students connect with alumni volunteers for career conversations and guidance it's like asking for directions for your career, and you can schedule on the platform. Hello, and welcome to Overcoming Uncertainty. My name is Eric Pavistic, and with me is... Jake Livengood, and we're on the same stage, believe it or not, Eric, this is crazy. Wow, look at us. <laughs> hey, how's the weather over where you're at, way across Massachusetts? What are you talking about, Jake? I'm just right across the stage from you. We're in the same <laughs> weather zone. But actually, no, it's actually kind of nice and sunny today, um, which is weird because it was snowing earlier today. How about you? How about the weather all the way on that side of the stage? Oh, I know. This side of the stage is still sunny, too. Thankfully, no snow. You know, and uh, obviously, our topic is uncertainty and overcoming it, working through it. What are some of the ways that you like to think about overcoming uncertainty? Yeah, so just as much as the weather is uncertain, it can also affect a, a person's mindset. So for example, this morning when I woke up and I saw snow, my first thought was, oh, this is awful. I don't want this again. And now this afternoon, it's sunny and bright, <laughs> and that's actually really improving my mindset. Um, how about you? How is, how is overcoming uncertainty kind of and mindsets for you? You know, one of the things that I like to to do is to to kind of reframe things, and that's one of the topics we're going to delve into today. And that's one component of design thinking. And one of the ways that designers look at the world is they have these certain mindsets and uh, strategies to work through uh, what we call wicked problems that are nonlinear in nature. So we're going to get into that today. Um, you know, for you, what are some ways that you think about uh, this related to career and uncertainty? Some of your favorites. Yeah, so later on today, I'll be sharing a little bit of uh, tools from my pop psychology toolbox uh, that really kind of <laughs> focuses on what is the best mindset to adopt in any sort of situation. Uh, so without further ado, let's take it away, Jake. Awesome. Hey everybody, thanks for joining Wicked Design Mindsets. I'm Jake Livengood with Career Advising and Professional Development. Here today to talk to you uh, about the four different types of design thinking mindsets that can help you overcome wicked problems. So wicked problems don't have a clear path. They don't have a linear way of solving them. And so designers use these ideas and these mindsets to overcome wicked, challenging, nonlinear problems. The first one is radical collaboration. Radical collaboration is the idea that you're not a lone ranger and that you need to rely on other people and have others' perspectives to gain um, help and support. And the more ideas, the better. Reframing. Reframing is a way of rethinking and um, revisiting different beliefs and different uh, concepts and thoughts that we have. Mindful of the process being aware of your energy levels, uh, how you uh, experience things, how you address them, and how you work through them. And also a bias to action. One of my personal favorites, a uh, bias to action is trying things out and testing and trying along the way. So designers use these to develop products, but in life design, we use these for prototyping and trying on things through conversations and experiences. 
So today we're going to focus on reframing and then the rest of our episodes we're going to look at the other aspects of design thinking that we um, introduced rather here today. Boy, it's a very tough time right now and reframing is a, a real important hallmark concept of design thinking that can help you overcome wicked problems. And what more of a wicked problem than being in a pandemic? Um, so a lot of times people are very uncomfortable with uncertainty, but now you add this on top of it, it's like a double whammy or a triple whammy of uncertainty. In reframing, we need to revisit our ideas of what we expect from ourselves. You know, I saw a meme the other day that said, you know, it's okay to not be as productive when you're in the middle of a pandemic. So we need to reframe our expectations for ourselves. Also, we need to reframe that uncertainty has always existed. It's just right now, everything is compounded onto one another. We also have to reframe what we can control. So in this current time with your career, one thing you might think of is what you can you control. There are a lot of things that you cannot, for example, the economy, uh, whether an internship or a job offer was taken back because of economic circumstances. But what you can control is how you approach things, how you might be able to uh, gain a skill during this time, how you might be able to reframe what um, an experience might be called. It might be called an internship, it might be called uh, working with a staffing agency for a temporary opportunity, or it might be called a full-time or part-time job. It might be a project that you, you work with. Uh, one of my favorites is if you want to work for uh, or gain skills in data science, uh, find a publicly available uh, data set and try to, using some coding to work through that and post a blog about it. So reframing what an experience is called can be very helpful in navigating these very difficult times during a pandemic. Oh my God, that was awesome. Jake, <laughs> tell me more. Love your enthusiasm, Eric. Thanks for that. <laughs> and welcome to our, uh, our new stage, by the way. Uh, we wanted to add some life to the stage, so we got plants. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Courtesy yeah. of uh, free stock photos. Hey, right on, right on. You know, I was thinking about ways that you can uh, continue this idea of reframing. There are a couple of career frames that, uh, reframes that come to mind, um, addressed on some common myths that are out there about career. Uh, one of them is that people sometimes have this mindset that in order to apply for a job, they have to want to accept that job or internship. But a reframe is to think of it as the start of the process, like, oh, I might be interested in learning more about it. Uh, also, another common mindset people have is that uh, they sometimes think, well, I have to decide what's great for me for the rest of my life with this next role. And that's a lot of pressure. And a nice re a reframe for that is, you know, what do I want to do next? What do I want to try on next? What do I want to prototype next? Um, you know, you previously mentioned some pop psychology tools that you like to use. Um, tell me some more about that. Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of stuff within popular psychology that I think are really helpful for a lot of students, um, not only in times of uncertainty, but just in practical everyday usage. Um, and so today I'd like to share with you at least one tool that I think really helps along the topic of mindset. Um, you know, especially when it comes to uncertain times, we might feel like we don't really have control over a lot of stuff. So today I'm gonna to be sharing a little bit more about um, a type of mindset you can adopt that can help you in a time of uncertainty. Welcome to the Pop Psychology Toolbox. I'm your host, Eric Pausick, and today we're talking about mindsets. But before we do that, let's play a game. It's time for everyone's favorite game, Super Mindset Challenge. And up for grabs today is an amazing prize pack you won't want to miss. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> Rules are simple. I'll ask you one question, and if you get it right, you win. Now here's the question. Do you believe that you are a success because of your innate ability? Or do you believe that you are a success because of your hard work, learning, and perseverance? Choose wisely. Is that your final answer? Ding, 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 congratulations. You have won a fabulous new gift mindset. 
This growth mind section is complete with a lobe-to-lobe -lobe understanding that you can continue to grow and develop your abilities through effort and persistence, courtesy of the research done by psychologist Carol Dweck. For those of you at home, you might be wondering, how do I get a growth mindset too? And I want to reintroduce you to a word in the English language that can come in quite handy. And that word is yet. Carol Dweck talks about the power of yet. And how does it work? Well, simply take a statement, for example, I am not good at math. And then just slip in the word yet to the very end of it, as in, I am not good at math yet. See how easy that is? If I just left it as, I am not good at math, I might resign myself to the idea that I can't do anything about it. I am just inherently bad at math. Carol Dweck defines that as a fixed mindset. I might feel that I am not good at math because I just have a talent or an innate ability for it and would skip any opportunity to challenge the idea that I am good at math. I might also avoid experiences that would make me potentially utilize math thus limiting my potential pathways and directions. By using the power of yet, I can add potential to my viewpoint. I am not good at math right now, but I can be. Growth mindset is about understanding that you have the ability to overcome many obstacles through effort and hard work. You will still make mistakes, but a growth mindset helps you understand that you can learn from these mistakes. By using the power of yet, you can begin to think about what steps you need to improve or grow. If I adopted the notion that I am not good at math yet, I can begin to think about what steps I need to take in order to become better at math. For example, I might read a book on the subject, or I might take a class. I might seek out tutoring or additional guidance from someone who is good at the subject. In many ways, a growth mindset is developed through an appreciation of learning. So keep in mind that you can improve. Your growth mindset will see you through both good times and bad, like right now. With many things changing because of the pandemic, you might feel helpless or out of control. This is a time where you're learning new things about yourself. Take a moment to think about how you can use this time to learn something new to prepare yourself for the potential changes ahead. Right now, the world may not be right yet, but it can be. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week in the Pop Psychology Toolbox. Wow, awesome, Eric. You really made that pop. That's amazing. Uh, oh boy, thank you, Jake. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're getting a little punny, aren't we? At the end of the web, our first web series. Uh, so, uh, a couple things we learned today. What'd you learn today, Eric? Well, in truth, you know, one of the things I'm going to take away from your wicked design mindsets is this whole idea <laughs> of reframing. Uh, you know, I want to I want to break apart certain things, like the number of outtakes I'm going to have in our recording today is probably going to be a whole lot longer than the salvageable stuff. So, but I'm going to reframe it and say, now I have a lot of footage that I can use for ulterior motives. And pranks. You're pretty good at pranks. So, so you're going to have a lot of material for pranks. And uh, something I learned today is the idea of yet. Like, so for example, we don't have 1.5 million views of this web series yet. You know, it's, it's just a matter of time. Really. Yeah. So. so it sounds like we've both learned quite a bit and we hope that you have too. Um, so as we're learning about design thinking and overcoming wicked nonlinear problems, and we're going to focus on reframing, I think we've learned quite a bit today. Absolutely. And, uh, we hope you join us next time. So thanks for joining us here on Overcoming Uncertainty. Thank you for joining us today on Overcoming Uncertainty. Be sure to check out our future episodes and subscribe to the UCAPD YouTube channel. And we'll also be interviewing various people to see how they've worked through this weirdness. For future help, check out CAPD's website. MIT students and postdocs can make an appointment on Handshake. Boy, it's an honor to partner with you. And until next time, 
Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. And we wish you the best. That's a wrap.